Hi guys. It is a pleasant, cool summer morning here on the 4th of July weekend. It is actually Saturday, July 3rd, 2021, which means I am a dollar short as I always am and a day late on my Friday rant, my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant. But we will pretend like it is Friday, July 2nd, 2021. So, as we do every Friday, we're going to head over to mongabay.com and see what is on the minds of Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over there. Uh, as Rhett continues his, uh, his chaotic, I think... I think chaotic is all is pretty much the correct adjective to describe the ecological meltdown roundup rant I do every every week. Wherever how many years have I been sitting here? Uh, maybe we'll call this the uh, is it stalactite or stalagmite, the one you know at the bottom of the uh, cave, just drip, drip, drip every week. And the, whichever one it is at the bottom just grows bigger and bigger. Yep, the steady drip of ecological collapse of a planet uh, building over the years. And uh, take a wild guess where we're going to start today's summer first. Is this the first? Yes, this is the first summer of 2021. Manga Bay rant. We're going to start in the Amazon rainforest. Have we ever heard this headline before at Manga Bay in the opening of summer? Fire season intensifies in the Brazilian Amazon, feeding off deforestation. 24 major fires have already burned in the Brazilian Amazon so far this year. All of them, every one of them, set on land deforested last year, okay, until this week when the first major blaze was set on land cleared this year. Hmm, experts are expecting this to be a bad year for fires owing to a historic drought, high levels of deforestation, and a lack of funding for environmental law enforcement. Do you think so? President Jair Bolsonaro signed a decree on June 23rd to send Brazilian soldiers into the Amazon to curb deforestation, which often precedes fires. But one expert called this a, quote, smoke screen. Yes, that would allow deforestation to continue. Deforestation rates have been higher under Jair Bozonero than under any past president. In 2020, Brazil lost a central park-sized area of rainforest every two hours and on the day with the highest rate of deforestation, which was July 31st, 2020, an estimated 2 million trees were cut down in one day. There you go. All right, we go from there to saving, to killing the planet, but we are going to create a cleaner, sustainable Earth future. Right? This is how we are going with all, uh, as the Amazon rainforest burns and tips over into Savannah, we are going, according to Manga Bay, create a cleaner, sustainable Earth future by converting bio waste to bio gas could power a cleaner, sustainable Earth future. Yes, I'm sure this, uh, here we go again. This is biogas. The little dog here is a quite a biogas factory himself. Biogas made from organic materials, such as dog food, including food and agricultural waste, and 
animal or human manure is a renewable, sustainable, affordable, and inclusive energy alternative becoming increasingly available to households, farms, municipalities, and nations. Yes, we are going to turn human your talk about a closed circle. So I guess the more people on the planet we breed, the more human your we're going to create as 8 billion people take a dump every day. We're going to turn this into biogas and save the planet. Uh, anyway, um, we have got to move on to reality. All right. So this is Manga Bay's list of what to watch for in July of 2021. Uh-huh. Okay, here we go. This is what to watch for on the planet as heat waves hit all over the world. Yes, well, I guess that's what we're going to be watching. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, plenty, plenty of watching heat waves all over the world in July of 2021. All right. <clears throat> I love it when they ask a question, because we all know the answer to the question. With growing pressures, can the Philippines sustain its marine reserves? The answer is, even if the pressure was where it is right now, even if the pressure was not growing, okay, it makes no difference. E even if the pressure was declining, I would say, uh, no, the Philippines cannot sustain its marine reserves. Yes, okay. Um, research suggests that only a third of the country's marine protected areas are now well managed and only, in fact, protect around 1% of the country's coral reefs. These areas are threatened by overfishing and illegal fishing, as well as the worsening impacts of climate change. So we have the answer to the question. <clears throat> All right. Here's a, uh, <laughs> here's a strange headline. Monks, monks and wildlife come under pressure from Malaysian Cement Company. Yes. <clears throat> Since last December, this giant planet-eating cement company has been trying to evict dozens of monks and devotees from their cave monastery in the limestone hills of somewhere in Malaysia. Uh, the concrete company calls the monks unlawful trespassers on their land. Yes, <clears throat> much of the mountain has already been quarried, quarried by APMC, and the untouched southern section where the monastery is located is also home to highly endemic and critically endangered flora and fauna. Yes. Good luck to the monks and the wildlife fighting a giant concrete, a, a cement company. Okay. Uh, here's, here's a new one. A new species where you can kiss goodbye out the face of the planet, the Indonesian porcupine. I had no idea until this, this second that porcupines lived in Indonesia, and in a few years, porcupines won't live in Indonesia because every porcupine in Indonesia will be in the stew pot. <clears throat> Study warns of impacts of unregulated trade in Indonesian 
porcupines. Yes. A new study examining seizure data of porcupines and their parts in Indonesia has found that more than 450 uh, that's a hell of a lot more than any 450. Uh, Indonesia is home to five porcu porcupine species, but only one is currently protected by law. Yes. Kiss goodbye, all five of the Indonesian porcupines. All right. Uh, let's check in with this very questionable news about expanding gorilla populations, which I don't, just for the record, guys, I don't believe it. I personally do not believe for one second that the gorilla population is expanding. I personally think this is unadulterated, greenwashing BS from some, uh, you know, some third world dictatorship in Africa. But apparently Rhett Butler is buying it. I'm not buying it for a second, but this is Rhett's rant, not mine. So even though Rhett is, is swallowing this greenwashing crap like that man is way too prone to do, even, and I guess even Manga Bay understands, without room to expand, mountain gorillas' population growth could backfire. Yes, mountain gorilla populations have grown in recent decades thanks largely to conservation efforts. Here, here, here's, a, uh, here's a real uh, oxymoron for the summer of 2021. Conservation efforts in Rwanda, Uganda, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. That's somewhat saying like chipmunk protection efforts uh, in Sancho land. But... The species' entire population is now confined to just three, uh, is, com, is confined to protected parks in these country, in these countries with limited room to expand. Yes. Um, and so the more gorillas that are trapped into these little islands of uh, are showing greater susceptibility to parasites and other health problems because as soon as they step outside of the park, they end up in a stew pot, although a lot of them are, are getting guns down inside the parks, which we learned in Gorillas in the Mist 40 years ago. Okay, guys, this is the reason, this next story, we're going to go down to Columbia. This is the reason that I depend on Manga Bay to educate me about how doomed the planet is. I never would have known this. I never would have known this if Rhett Butler wasn't on the alert to send us this dispatch from Columbia. Did you realize that the beef industry causes deforestation in Columbia's Chirbiquete National Park? A recent investigation by the Environmental Investigation Agency. There you go. Ah, a re that, that I like to see that an investigation agency is doing its job. A recent investigation by the Environmental Investigation Agency has found that some Colombian supermarkets may be selling beef from cattle raised inside Chirbiquete National Park. Yes. Anyway. Okay. See, this is uh, th this is the definition of conservation in the year 2021. It used to be that conservationist and environmentalist. Um, Paul Kingsnorth has a great 
there's a great video with Paul Kings North explaining this, the difference, why he is no longer an environmentalist. And this is a perfect example of why I am not an environmentalist. As Paul Kings North explained, environmentalist and conservationist you know when there is, is, is some planet eating road being you know slam plan to go slam through a national park conservationists and environmentalists used to say no new roads you, you know there is no room for compromise in saving this planet now what a, 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 an environmentalist says is they don't say don't build the road. They say, could you just move the road a little bit to the right or left? This is why I am not uh, an environmentalist, but I need to remember what channel I am on before getting into a, a, uh, another rant. We're just going to read uh manga bay spin on this about how environmentalists are calling for alternative routes for bornean road to avoid wildlife habitat coalition humans habitats coalition humans habitats highways uh, <laughs> there's a great name for a for an environmental organization named Coalition Humans Habitats Highways has urged authorities in the Malaysian state of Sabah to adopt alternative routes to uh, the stretch of the Pan Borneo Highway. Yes, that the particular stretch of highway cuts through a protected forest reserve and overlaps extensively with heavily used elephant migration paths. Experts say constructing the highway as currently planned would increase wildlife vehicle collisions, including deadly accidents involving elephants. Yes, I love this one. It would also derail progress made by local community efforts encouraging humans and elephants to coexist in harmony. Again, that is like suggesting Sancho Panza and chipmunks to coexist in harmony. Anyway, all right. Let's go over to, I guess this is pretty where, pretty much anywhere in the mountains of Southeast Asia, another shocking headline from Manga Bay that you never could have figured out on your own. This is why we love Rhett. Forest loss in the mountains of Southeast Asia is accelerating at a shocking pace. Southeast Asia is home to roughly half of the world's tropical mountain forest, which support massive carbon stores and tremendous biodiversity, including a host of species that are occur nowhere else on the planet. So let's look at a new study. A new study reveals that mountain forest lost in Southeast Asia is accelerating at an un unprecedented rate throughout the region, meaning uh, the planet eaters are, are obliterating the forest uh, on the mountains of Southeast Asia faster than they ever have in the history of humanity, which might have something to do, guys, with the fact that there are more humans on the planet that need forest products, like, you know, the forest products that are building my tiny house 30 feet from where I'm sitting. Uh, you know, those forest products. A new study reveals that mountain forest loss in Southeast Asia is accelerating at an unprecedented rate throughout the region, approximately 100 
89,000 square kilometers, otherwise known as 73,000 square miles. 73,000 square miles of, of mountain rainforest in Southeast Asia has been obliterated off the face of this planet so far uh, this de so far this century uh, and take a wild guess converted to cropland yes <clears throat> Mountain forest loss has far-reaching implications for people who depend on forest resources. Yes, those poor people. Okay, you will not believe this headline. You know, it's one after, you know, every time I open Manga Bay every week, it is a learning experience for me. It, 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 it is doomer, doom and gloom 101. I never would have thought of this on my own, but once again, we have Rhett Butler to explain it to us. Take it away, Rhett. Explain this one to us. Okay, what is the single biggest factor defining elephant ranges across Africa? I'm going to give you a hint. It is the same biggest factor defining the ranges of every single fellow earthling we share this planet with on the planet. Every one of them. Elephants in Africa is one of 10 million. Take a wild guess. What is the biggest factor defining elephant ranges across Africa? If your answer was humans, give yourself a gold star. A recently published study that analyzed movement data from 229 elephants has found that humans, hmm, human influence, yes, how about that being the leading factor determining the size of elephant ranges, protected areas, yes, alone are not large enough to provide space for elephants and elephants living outside of them are under pressure from expanding human populations. This is for all you little lefty, and I won't use little lefties out there talking about how overpopulation is is only uh, it, it it is overconsumption by those uh, those rich honkies in America and Europe and, and those Chinese people that uh, that overpopulate. If, if you mention. Uh, too damn many people being born in sub-Saharan Africa. You are a right-wing, Trump-tard voting racist. So I guess Rhett Butler and Ham, and, oops, <coughs> and, and uh, Sam Mitchell are right-wing, Trump voting racists for saying there's too damn many people being born in Africa. Three out of four people on this planet in the 21st century are being born in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, and, and, and you wonder why elephant ranges are shrinking. Uh, anyway, I better move on before I've already made one slip up here. Okay. I'm just going to read this headline for the knee slapper of the week. Sri Lanka banks on the ocean to chart a green path toward a blue economy. Uh, if I even open up this can of worms, Sri Lanka banks on the ocean to chart a green path toward a blue economy. I will probably be demonetized for uh, excessive foul language, so I'm going to move on. Okay, you will not believe this one. We just talked about the mountains in Southeast Asia. 
I don't know if this is a mountain or a lowland. You will not believe this, guys. You will not believe it. I mean, it, it is the shocking revelation after shocking revelation here in, uh, in this roundup this week. Do you believe that deforestation of endangered wildlife habitat continues to surge in Myanmar, or however you pronounce, M-Y-A-N-M-A-R. I pronounce it Burma. All right. The Tanatheri region of Burma is home to unique and endangered species, but its forests are being cleared. So this one area of forest has lost, and, and again, uh, I take this figure with a huge grain of salt. This, uh, so far this century, 14% of the primary forest has been, uh, has already been lost, and new satellite data show deforestation activity spiking in many parts of the forest including in the last known habitat of the critically endangered Gurney's Pitta. I think a Pitta is a monkey. I, I, uh, d does anyone out there believe uh, that 86% uh, of this uh, primary rainforest is still standing? Although by the end of this rant, that will be uh, there. There is no way that 86% of that rainforest is still standing in 2021. Sancho Panza says he has had enough of this rant. I, I, and, and again, guys, I'm barely touching on half of the story. Uh, uh, half of the stories here. Uh, okay, we've had, I, I, Manga Bay has had this uh, story before, but it's, it's good to revisit it, uh, talking about how war is good for the planet. And uh, is war good for the planet? And the answer to this is, on some ways, yes, war is good for the planet. And there is going to Colombia uh, for this story. In Colombia, the end of war meant the start of runaway deforestation. A new study analyzes the changes in forest cover in Colombia before and after the signing of a peace agreement uh, in 2016 between the government and armed guerrillas. Um, the authors found that between 1988 and 2012, the forest area transformed to cropland amounted to about 3 million acres, but, at, but that in the much briefer period, post-conflict period, the pace of forest conversion you know, to agriculture surged with 1.2 million acres turned into farmland. Uh, the researchers also identified a direct, a direct relationship between violent events and the loss of forest cover. You know, either way, uh, the planet loses. War is good and bad for a planet. Okay, another story about Sumatran rhinos. Um, but we do have, we're going to wind up actually with some uh, hallelujah news. This was even in the mainstream media. I knew Manga Bay uh, was going to mention it. They are closing with a bright spot uh, from Brazil. You know, everyone talks about Jair Bozo Nero as being the biggest planet eater on the planet, which he is. Uh, well, that guy in China running the uh, running the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, whose name I can't pronounce, that little dictator over there. I I anyway, 
but it's Bozo Nero's right hand man, this slime bag, uh, the environment minister, Ricardo Sayez. All right, poor Ricardo is in the unemployment line. He can go back to being a lobbyist for the timber industry in Brazil, which is what he was before he became the environment minister. He is back to his old job. Timber troubles fell. Ricardo Sayez, Brazil's now former environment minister. Three weeks after being named in a second probe into alleged illegal exports of Amazon timber and facing growing opposition, Brazil's controversial environment minister, Ricardo Saez, was ousted on June 23rd, quote, upon request, whatever that means. Uh, despite his controversial remarks, you know, what he's most famous for is when Corona panic uh, hit Brazil, that he said, we can use Corona Panic as the perfect cover story to gut any environmental re regulations in, in Brazil. Uh, that he just made it clear that Corona Panic was an absolute godsend to the Bozo Nero administration to ramp up the attacks on the Amazon rainforest. Despite his controversial remarks and heavily criticized policies that fueled deforestation rates in the Amazon under his tenure, Salias enjoyed relative stability in the government. Yes. Uh, so who has he been replaced by? How about Joaquim Alves Pereira Leite, who has been in the environment ministry since 2019. Before that, he held a board seat for more than 20 years at an agribusiness lobbying institute. Out with the old boss, in with the new. The new boss looking a hell of a lot like the old boss. Imagine that. So we have an uh, we have an agribusiness lobbyist uh, getting sacked for corruption, being replaced by an agribusiness lobbyist, and we wonder why deforestation rates in the Amazon rainforest are going through the roof. But anyway, uh, the little dog and I need to wrap up this rant because he needs to go get some chippies. And I've been looking at this big pile of planet-eating gravel from this big gravel pit three miles from my house. What, what this pit is, this giant open pit gravel mine almost inside of my house, what, it, what it's actually doing is, is serving the fracking industry. Uh, you know, fracking is illegal in New York. I'm just 10 miles from Pennsylvania, but it's not illegal to mine, you know, the sand and gravel and all of that crap that frackers need. So even though I am in New York, there's this giant open pit gravel mine, you know, where the frackers bring their trucks up every day to load up and head back to Pennsylvania. Uh, but anyway, they were nice enough. One of these fracker trucks was nice enough to bring me a load of gravel, I guess, before he ran down to Pennsylvania and dumped it in my driveway. So I have to go out there and start shoveling gravel uh, on this nice, cool 68 degree day in July before the heat wave returns on Monday. So anyway, we're going to wrap this up and get out there and enjoy your fireworks show while you still can because the fireworks are just beginning to explode here in the summer of 2021. We're done with our rant. Bye, guys. Yes, you survived another Manga Bay rant. Does it make you a happy dog or what? 
I'm going to get chippies. Froggies. Snakies. I'm going to get the snakies. 